This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. So what we have here is a, a dry powder printer. This is just the artwork for the show. So normally, instead of the colored materials, that would be a metal or ceramic. So how fast can you deposit metal? Well, it depends on the print head. This print head is a three millimeter nozzle. We typically go 50 millimeters a second. The flow rate for that is roughly 10 to 20 grams a minute. Uh, but we also have print heads with nozzles up to 25 millimeters that can travel 400 millimeters a second. So it really wow. depends on the part uh, that we're So going 25 millimeters, that's like the, almost the entire width of that nozzle assembly. Yes. yes. Wow. If you're making a big part, you don't need a tiny nozzle. Right, and you don't have to heat or cool or no. deal with any of that. These are all loose powders with no binder. We print directly into a hot isostatic press. They fill up in the can. After the can's sealed and degassed, we send it to get hipped, and at temperature and pressure, the metals consolidate, and the support material stays loose. And is the support material, is that just like sand, essentially? It's a, any casting sand. What do those hot isopress cans look like? Hot isostatic ah, press. Okay. Yep. Uh, they're over here. Really just a cylindrical can um, with an open lid. We'd print directly into it. Any geometry that fits inside the can, we could uh, print any material, uh, metal or ceramic. We seal this lid, weld it with an evacuation port, and send it out to hit toll process. So you basically just opened this up and that's what's in there? Well, it would have been filled with a, whatever the support material is also. So we flush that out and then the part, uh, we retrieve the part. You've got 316L, steel, copper. Uh, what is this for it? It almost looks like a, a holy it's hand grenade. Yeah, it's just a, <laughs> it's a just demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. Nice reference, but yeah. demonstration. <laughs> okay, okay. And then uh, this... This is actually neodymium iron boron and copper. Wow. So this is a, a, a rare earth magnet material. Yeah. Uh, this in, uh, impeller has 316L fins surrounded by Inconel 625. Wow. So I guess your customers are like building heavy industrial parts that you can't really do plastic with. Yeah, no. we don't do plastic. Yeah. Don't do plastic. I think this is a great first look at this. I, I mean... It's a technology that a lot of people probably have never seen. Next, I want to tell you about a 3D printer that prints medical materials, so it simulates bone and tissue. And there's another printer I want to tell you about that's using 2D printing techniques and stacking them in order to produce parts in as little as 9 seconds per part. But first, I have to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Mainly, I'm a YouTube content creator, so I focus really hard on making good YouTube content, which doesn't leave a whole lot of time to make my website. So what I can do is take that transcript from my YouTube video and then instead of just pasting it into this page, which wouldn't look very nice, I can actually go into the AI Assistant and do a paragraph about this. So I can just take a part of my video and then directly translate it into a web article. Well, that's one of the really cool features that Squarespace has integrated into their website. And in terms of user experience, they're really kind of leading the way. So if you want to try out Squarespace for yourself, go to squarespace.com and start your free trial. It doesn't even require a credit card. You can just get started here. And, and if you decide that you like your website and you want to publish it, go to squarespace.com slash NathanBuildsRobots and use code NBR for 10% off your purchase. We're bringing the medical materials that are simulating bones and tissues to a smaller format machine that's much easier to get in somewhere like a hospital or even a doctor's office. What are these medical analogs used for? Surgical planning. Say somebody's got a specific heart defect. The surgical team can actually print out that patient's heart with real tissue simulation. So when they're planning how to go about a surgery, they can actually practice on a model before they have to open up the patient. So helps provide better outcomes because they know exactly what they're doing when they go in rather than having to plan on the fly during the middle of a surgery. And then also training. So medical students historically have worked on cadavers. Uh, those are rather expensive and obviously there's a supply uh, problem with those sometimes. If you're able to just print out a body or an organ, uh, you're able to train, learn how to suture without having to use human tissue. Do you interact with a lot of surgeons in your... Me personally, yeah. no, but okay. I know our medical team does. We definitely take some input from what they require in order to develop a machine like this. 
Um, so, you know, tissue matrix, bone matrix, that was a request to get something that felt like actual tissue, yeah. actual bone as they're working on these parts. So even um, like orthopedic surgery where they're gonna be cutting into the bones. Exactly, so this would be a great use of doing both bone and tissue because obviously when you're drilling into something like this, the disc between your spinal bones compared to the bones feel a lot different. So you'd be able to feel that with the drill if you're going to practice on it because there's two different materials in that print. Yeah, and in surgery, like uh, the nerves are very important to stay away from, so. Exactly. Do you ever use uh, patient data scans to produce the models or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so that, that's a whole industry called segmentation. So doing a CT scan or an MRI and taking that data, which is just hundreds of slices. It's basically taking a picture of one layer of your body and then using software to kind of combine all that data into a 3D model. A rather complex process, but there are companies out there that can do that and provide basically a model of what's going on. I actually recently did this. Um, I was having some dental work done and they made a 3D model of my jaw oh, wow. so they could plan how to put a tooth in there. So crazy! Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing where medical software is going. Uh, and this is just one tool in the toolkit to kind of improve medical outcomes. The droplets have to be aimed very precisely to be able to make a model like this with all the, uh, the different materials in the right places. I mean, it feels like a hand, but it's cold, so yeah, it's like... It's, uh, it's kind of it's gross, kind of <laughs> scary. <laughs> and then uh, it does full color too for like... Yes, yeah, so this would be full color rigid. You can do colors uh, with the medical simulations, but uh, we've got six material bays. There are maybe four different medical materials specifically, like bone, tissue, um, those sorts of materials. So if you are doing all the medical modeling, you might only get like two colors, but you can do full color, CMYK and clear. Uh, so you have the options to change things around depending on the model you're printing. What I love about this machine is the rotating tray rather than the legacy polyjet machines, which are actually moving the print heads back and forth. It helps cut down on the, like, the wear and tear of the actual print heads. It makes it a lot easier to clean uh, because you don't have this big system that's moving all around the tray. <laughs> so medical models uh, in a smaller format. And this thing spinning around like this looks like it's a glitched computer graphic or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a loading screen for sure. The machine that you see brings together the process just like the video. So this module is unwinding that roll. This module is aligning the roll of the print head. This module, which I believe we are starting, is doing the printing. So it is actually applying the inject fluid and doing the powdering. Um, and then this module is cutting and this module is stacking. And Thor, I'll let Thor change. You can walk over and watch it print if you'd like in front of there. We'll also have it here on the video and then in the machine for you to see. And if you see it on the left, I think it has to create a pattern. Here, that big white stick is after the powder is applied, it's just blood coated. And then back you up. And like if you've ever done glitter and glue with your pit, where the powder got wet, it sticks where it doesn't, it's vacuumed up and recycled instantaneously in the machine. Reuse immediately in a loop when you're back into the next layer in those parts. And then you can see where uh, the, there's a small black space. In that black space, that's where we put the continuous left. We've got to make now a second stack. And so we put that sheet, and then it's stacked in this module. See then the cut sheets coming into the stacker here, where the stack precisely controlled by aligning these sheets to a metal end, to in a corner. So the sheet is aligned in a corner, the next sheet aligned to the same corner over and on over, and you create that vertical stack very precisely. Now, this here is an example of a thousand layers. We print 60 micron layers, so that would be about 2.2 inches apart. Uh, build blocks are 2.2 by um, 18 by 18 in one hour. I'm not going to make you watch this for an hour. Uh, I like to watch it for an hour, but you may not. Um, but in this, we're going to do 100 layers, 60 micron layers. And in that six minutes, we will print 88 of those small parts that we're showing you. 
So that kind of speed under five seconds apart, it really differentiates us. Now, the time to the first part out has to include the time you take this fill block and put it in an oven and heat it above that mountain point and cool it. So you wouldn't get the first part until maybe six or seven hours later. But again, you'd have bill black after bill block coming and, can, and you'd get a, uh, 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 an average uh, uh, throughput rate of one part every five seconds. And you would do that, the printer isn't fast so fast oh, that man. we would have that is, multiple, uh... in a work cell, we'll have multiple heated presses that you would take a bill block out, put it in one heated press, next bill block, and then